If you are someone who is looking to get more leafy green veggies into your diet, but have a hard time storing them in the fridge and keeping them fresh, then today's video is for you. I definitely am someone who struggles to eat enough veggies. And part of the problem is just keeping them freshly stocked in my fridge. It takes up a lot of room when you buy those big bags of like spinach and kale, they can go bad very quickly. The way to combat that is by using a freeze dryer. So I am sorry about the humming of the freeze dryer in the background. I already have it running, getting ready for today's freeze dryer run. I am going to show you the step-by-step -step process on how to freeze dry your leafy green veggies and how you can store them on your pantry shelf. They're not gonna go bad. You can use them for a very long time and always have them on hand to throw into recipes or into a smoothie. So once I have my veggies freeze dried, I am going to show you how you can use your freeze dried greens in a Instant Pot soup recipe and also in a smoothie. When my kids were young, I used to be so good about making them smoothies with lots of spinach in them just to add those extra vitamins and minerals into their diets and a smoothie was always something I could get them to eat. I have been slacking on that lately so today I'm getting back on the track of feeding my kids some greens. Let's take you upstairs and I will show you how I prepared the greens on my freeze dryer tray to get ready for the freeze dryer. Welcome to my kitchen. The greens that I am going to freeze dry in our freeze dryer run is kale and spinach. I purchased these two large bags of spinach at Costco. I liked that it was organic. And I got these two big bags of kale that is also organic from Walmart. Now there are definitely different ways that you can freeze dry greens. Today, I am just going to leave the greens whole. I wanted to preserve my leaves whole so that I can use them for recipes when it calls for whole leafy greens. But I also will be able to use them like in smoothies and stuff like that just by throwing them freeze dried directly into the blender. You also could grind up them into a powder once they are finished freeze drying also. So, I will show you some options when we're all finished. Right now is when I'm wishing I had a bigger capacity freeze dryer, just because these veggies don't go too far on the trays when you are leaving them whole like this. But I wanna do this and I will um, just have to do another batch when this one is finished. I do have a full kale and a full spinach left over. So just if you're gonna do this and you need to buy the produce yourself at like, if you buy the same bags that I did, you only need one bag of spinach from Costco and one bag of the big kale from Walmart. And that will fill up your four trays of your medium sized freeze dryer. I also did remove some of these thick stalks that were um, attached to the kale just because no one likes to eat that stuff. Another way that you can do freeze dried grains that can go make your veggies go a little farther is by first processing your leaves in a blender, like a high capacity blender, like a Vitamix. Just put your leaves in, add some water to it, blend it up and make it more of like a slurry. Then you can pour those into your freeze dryer trays and freeze dry it that way that will give you more bang for your buck in your freeze dryer. If you are just looking for greens powder, you then turn that into a powder and you've got powdered greens. I definitely wanna do that the next time I do greens, but for this video, I wanted the whole leaf so that I could use it for cooking. So I just need to stick on my tray lid so I can get these downstairs. <laughs> As you can see, they're kind of busting out the seams. It's not a big deal. I am just using the lid so I can carry them downstairs easily to my freeze drying room. And when I put them in my freeze dryer, I'm gonna try to like squish them down as good as possible just so that they're not like touching the heating element of the next shelf 
in the freeze dryer. See you in a minute. I am here at my freeze dryer. Let's talk about the settings I am going to use. I'm going to come in and hit customize and I am good with the settings that I have on here. I'm just going to increase my dry time. I like to add like seven hours because if it happens to finish in the middle of the night while we are like asleep and not ready to get to the freeze dryer, it will just keep drying your food and that's not gonna hurt anything and it'll give, make sure that you are extra dry. So that's what I like to do. And then when I get up in the morning, if it's done, I can pull it out, check it and make sure and go from there. I'm just gonna hit save and start. We wait a 15 minute cool down period before loading. If you're looking for lids for your freeze dryer trays, I got mine just directly from Harvest Right. They work great. They're super convenient for making your trays um, easy to travel with, meaning like from room to room, you can carry them all in a stack. I also like them for pre-freezing foods. Very handy. You can check um, the link in my video description to the Harvest Right website that will take you directly to Harvest Right where you can shop for accessories and check out freeze dryers there. I am feeling super pumped about the recipe. I am going to use my freeze dried kale and spinach. It. So be sure to stick around for that. Once our freeze drying process is over, it's gonna be a good one. I think Olive Garden, if you love their famous Zupa Toscana soup, I am making my own take on that soup. So it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be done in the Instant Pot which makes making soups super easy. Our 15 minute cool down period is up so we can get our trays loaded into the freeze dryer. You just need to make sure to close the drain valve. And I'm gonna get these in here. They are pretty full, so I am just going to film a time lapse of me loading these up. I may have to make adjustments as I stick them in there when I see how they fit on the shelves and stuff. adjustments I was able to get this to fit in here I am going to close my freeze dryer and just hit continue that's it I will definitely keep you guys updated on how long this takes to freeze dry I did not do any pre-freezing so it's gonna do the full freezing and then freeze drying cycle if you haven't subscribed to my DIY freeze dry channel and you are enjoying these videos and want to see more and all of the different things that I do using my lovely trusty freeze dryer, hit that subscribe button and like, give me any comments or feedback you have in the comment box below the video. I love getting any tips and tricks from you guys because there are so many freeze drying experts out there that have already given me so many helpful tips. So thank you for all of those. I will catch you guys tomorrow and we will get cooking with our soup recipe and making some smoothies. Welcome to day two. We are ready to get these greens out of the freeze dryer. These have been in for 23 and a half hours. As you can see, I have almost used all of my extra dry time. So they probably would have been done sooner than 23 hours, but today's been a hectic day. I'm just now getting around to working on these greens. So it probably is a few hours shorter than what it says. I am just going to hit cancel and I'm going to open my drain valve and open up these beautiful greens. Here are our greens. They are just perfectly crisp and crunchy and definitely seem fully freeze dried. I'm not afraid to eat a spinach chip. <laughs> Let's talk about storing these greens. For long-term storage, I'm going to use um, Mylar bags with oxygen absorber and heat seal it closed with my heat sealer. I'm gonna do a bag of spinach and a bag of kale in these bags. I'm gonna do some in a couple of mason jars so that I can just keep these in my pantry and have them on hand for whenever I want to use them in like a quick recipe or a smoothie. 
wow, I am a mess today. I dropped that bag and now need to vacuum the floor. But I just want to show you, we are going to toss in, I have stuffed my spinach in this one. I'm tossing the Harvest Right oxygen absorber in here. I'm going to do that in each one of these guys. And then take it to my heat sealer. These are so light, but these are now going to be shelf stable for like 20 years, which is super awesome. I've got a whole nother batch of the rest of my greens to freeze dry, but I am going to get the rest of these in the mason jars and bring them upstairs and I will meet you there so we can get working on our soup instant pot recipe. I will first show you how I do my jarred freeze dried food for storage. I'm just, what is with me and dropping things today? Uh, and now kids. Okay, I threw an oxygen absorber in here. I just put my little lid on and then I use my vacuum jar sealer. So you just do that. So that's it. This will be good in my pantry like this for like a year or two, but I'm going to be using it much sooner than that. And just every time I go to pull out any of the greens from it, I'll just re-vacuum seal it before I put it away and it keeps it nice and crispy and fresh. Let's move on to the soup. I think I need to pull my hair back because it is just getting in the way. I am still learning how to film cooking videos. So bear with me. I'm not a pro at this yet. Hopefully one day, but I have all of my ingredients here. Let me show you what we're going to use. I have my instant pot. Mine is a crock pot brand version of the instant pot. I have turned it on the brown sear setting and just hit start because I am going to use the searing function before I use the soup function. I have all of my ingredients here and as I add them in, I will tell you what I am using. Like I said before, this is my take on the Zupa Toscana Olive Garden Soup. That is just so good. But I have a few different ingredients that I'm gonna be substituting in just for fun. So here we go. First. I am going to add two tablespoons of butter and some chopped up onions. It's a half of a yellow onion and get those sauteing in the Instant Pot. While these are sauteing, I'm just going to add in my spices, which is some salt. I'm probably going to do about a teaspoon of each, but I'm an eyeballer, not an exact measurer when it comes to cooking. so. There's that for you. Here is just some black pepper going in. This here is my freeze dried garlic powder that I made in a previous video, which I will tag here if you are interested in how to do that. I am just going to add some of that to here. This smells amazing. I'm also adding my freeze dried peppers which is kind of like my own chili powder. This is looking so good and already smells delicious. I'm going to add an entire quart of, this is beef broth. You could use any kind of chicken stock, chicken broth, beef broth, bone broth, anything you want. I also have two cups of water going into the pot. And I'm going to adjust if I need to. I'm sorry, I keep bending down like this. If I need more liquid, then I will just add more if I need it. For the potatoes in this soup, I am using butternut squash. It's just something I really love. I love all squash, so I really like it in soup. So instead of doing normal white potatoes that you would have in this type of soup, I am doing butternut squash. And the frozen butternut squash that I get at Walmart is perfect. I did two bags of those and frozen straight from my fridge into here. 
For my protein, I am using a pound of cooked ground beef and a pound of cooked Italian sausage. I also am sorry about all the junk on my dining room table. I'm just now noticing that there. Our pantry had a flood in it a few weeks ago and we've been out of town and have not gotten that fixed. So our huge dining table is serving as our pantry space. So sorry about that mess over there. But the next ingredient is definitely my favorite. It is this bacon that has a special story behind it. I mean, it's not that big of a story, but when we moved here, our next door neighbor brought us a package of bacon and we were like, this is a nice uh, new neighbor gift, some bacon. And he makes his own bacon and it is literally the best bacon I've ever had. It is, he, I don't know what he does to it, but it's in some type of bourbon sugar mixture. I don't know, but it is amazing. So we bought a bunch of bacon from him a couple months ago and it is in our freezer and we just pull it out when we want to use it and it's amazing. This is looking so good. So this is where I'm going to stop as far as ingredients go while the soup cooks in the instant pot. When it is finished, I am going to add my spinach and kale and the best part, heavy cream. For this, I'm just going to hit the soup function and hit start. And in 30 minutes, this soup will be ready. Our soup is done. I've just released the valve to let the steam out and then we will see how it looks. All right, let's see here. That is looking so good. I've dished me up a bowl and I'm just going to top it with some Parmesan cheese and give this a taste test. All right, let's give it a taste. I hope it's not too hot. I need to get a little bit of everything on the bite. So good. The flavor is there. This literally tastes amazing. I hope you try this recipe or something similar to it. Let me know if you do. You will love it for sure. We're gonna eat this for dinner tonight and then we will come back for dessert. We're gonna make a green monster protein shake. Okay, I already taste tested the green monster shake and it was delicious. We are gonna see what the little boys think. Go ahead and give it a try. It's very good. Do you like the green color? It's delicious. Delicious? Yeah. Scrumshy delumptious? Yeah. And mommy, delicious. look at this good. blueberry. Look at these blueberries. Yes, let's show them our blueberry bushes. They are getting lots of blueberries ready to grow. Some of them on this bush is almost bloom. This one's got a lot on them. I am so stoked about these blueberries. We will definitely be filming when they are ripe and we are ready to pick them. They're gonna be so good. Green Monster Shake, definitely a hit. A great way to get some greens into your kiddos' hey, stomachs because that is definitely a hard thing for me to do. So sticking it into a smoothie like this is just like perfect. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you are going to try making this soup recipe and if you have tried freeze drying greens before. Let me know how you did it and how they turned out for you and any other ways that you like to use your freeze dried greens because I would love more ideas. I'm closing out today's video, not on a huge Alaskan adventure, just at a beautiful park here in Anchorage. We finally have some sun shining on us today and everyone here is just thrilled because it has been a very rainy and wet summer. So thank goodness for some sun. My kiddos, can you guys say goodbye to our friends? Goodbye. Are enjoying the gorgeous day and we will catch you on the next freeze drying adventure. Bye!